Salutations, everybody. You're watching Roll for Crit. And in this video, we're actually going to review three games, giving you three reviews for the price of one. All of these come from Cryptozoic, and all of them feature artwork by one artist, Stephen Rhodes, who does this very retro 60s, 70s kind of art style that looks like classic kids' illustrations. However, these games have some creepy twists and turns that make them a little bit more sinister, a little bit more dangerous than that innocent artwork might imply. We're going to go over all three of them today, starting with Let's Dig for Treasure. In this game, you'll be digging in these graveyards, these three piles, trying to find the most points by the end of the game. You may just find some dirt, or you can dig up some things that are worth a little bit more. But watch out. If, as you reveal cards, you reveal either two worm cards at once, or a skeleton, you've pushed your luck and you have to give up everything that you've dug. Now, there of course are plenty of more things in here. There are some cards that will trigger once you score and decide to stop, some that will trigger right away, or give negative points. So keep an eye out on what you can find in those graves. The three piles are shuffled randomly, so you have no idea what you're gonna get. You can swap between them as you draw, and you're just gonna keep going, trying to get the most points that you can each turn. But as soon as one of the decks does run out completely, the game ends and you see who has the most points, depending on the conditions of these cards. So as a group, you can kind of decide, oh, maybe I want the game to end now, so I'm really gonna go all in on one pile. Or maybe you try to spread things out more evenly. You might get superstitious about things the way I do and say, oh no, this is a worm pile. There's too many worms in here. Or, oh, we got a bunch of worms from here, so I bet it's safe now. <laughs> but it's not going to be when you when you think that possibly. <laughs> this is the quickest of the three games and it's a very simple push your luck with a lot of weird cards in there though. So it's not simply just bad card and high point. Like I said, there's these weird cards that activate. There are some that can be for these really swingy, hilarious turns that are like, if this is the first time you're playing or if you own the game, or if you end the game this turn when you score this, it's worth more points. So it's gonna be one that has a lot of luck involved, but because of that, I think it's almost just hilarious to see how your games turn out. Yeah, definitely a party filler style game, which is kind of a thread you'll see throughout all three of these titles. And yeah, there's not a ton of uh, player interaction. You're basically worried about your own business, but there are some cards that will have things like, oh, look at the top four maybe. So you might have some information about one of these piles and maybe you could use that to your advantage and other players might try to figure out, oh, why didn't they draw from this pile oh, after yeah. they looked at it? <laughs> That's actually some of the best moments I had where we're like, I looked at the top four and you just see me go, Okay, I'm gonna continue drawing here, and everyone's like, "Okay, that's a that's a that's a radioactive pile. Leave that one alone." <laughs> yeah, we'll never look at that pile again. So yeah, there are some weird, funny cards, and again, as you can see, you are digging through graves. So there's some weird stuff that you're digging up. It, it's a little bit, it's a little bit out there, guys. That's pretty weird. You gotta have a hey, sick sense of humor. There's leprechaun gold in those graves. There is leprechaun's gold. Apparently, I guess a leprechaun was buried there. I, I don't know how that works out. But yeah, I think if you like a silly, fast-paced, casual card game push your luck and you're not taking it super seriously. This one is pretty fun. The next game in the collection is Let's Summon Demons. In this one, you're all trying to summon demons uh, faster than everyone else, as well as collecting souls along the way. So a little bit more sinister than just grave digging. This time you're really out to harm some people potentially. There are going to be a set of cards from the block. This is referred to as the block, and these are block cards, because you're essentially abducting children and animals from around the block in order to use their souls and trade them in for demon summons just exactly how you would expect it to go. And you will begin with a candle of some type that will have a set of numbers on it. And as you go, you'll be collecting more of these cards to add to your collection. And on your turn, you will be rolling two dice. And whatever the numbers are, they're going to trigger a card with that number on it. And that counts for anybody playing, not just whose turn it is. So if a nine or a 10 or 11 were rolled, this candle would activate and you would get to collect a soul. These are your soul tokens. Then you get to, if you want to, spend three souls on one of these cards that are available here and add it to your personal collection. You can actually buy a card before or after you roll, depending on what you think will benefit you at that time. And once you collect three different souls, you can choose to trade them all in and discard them to play a demon from your hand. Everybody's going to start with three. And the demons have their own numbers, their own effects, but usually they are stronger, more powerful than others. They might just give you a lot more souls 
spells. This one actually has you searching the deck for a different demon to summon. You've got re-roll Lucifer here who has a permanent ongoing power like some of them do have that lets you re-roll your dice. So you're trying to, you know, get synergy with some of these different cards. Some of them will also allow you to do things like look through the top of the deck. A lot of them will just get you souls. Maybe they'll look at your other characters that you have and depend on whether they are considered sweet or rotten or if they're boys or girls, they could have different effects. And the first person to summon all three of their demons and then also have 10 soul tokens is the winner. So this one plays a lot like Machi Koro, but I I found it a bit interesting because one, the buying before you roll is a small, but it's one of those fun tweaks because you can be like, I can buy something for my combo before I roll. Yeah. (laughs) And the other thing was the way that you have plenty of synergy, like you said, whether animal or the sweet and rotten, but then sometimes because you have to give up those cards, you snuff them out, as the rule book says, to summon a demon. And you're like, do I want to give up my engine for this or should I wait until I get a couple more cards so I can keep the engine going when I add the demon, which might be beneficial because there are demons that will be like for every time an animal triggers or if for all your or your boys or something. So sometimes you're like, it bet, you, you have to question when it's best to just get those demons out as quick as possible or to go for maybe keep it because the demons will only, the ones with numbers only trigger on your turn. The block cards will trigger on everyone's turn. Yeah, it is an interesting decision. You kind of have to decide, do I stall myself now? Is the demon's power worth it? Because especially early on, depending on what number spread you have, there could be a lot of turns where just nothing's happening for you and you might just not be getting any souls and you might just be going, okay, nothing. I can't do anything, you go. <laughs> there is, I think, a trend in this game compared to Machi Koro because you're always rolling two dice. You never choose between one or mm-hmm. two unless there's some special card that I miss, which is possible. I think most of the numbers tend to be on the higher end. So it's interesting looking at the distribution, but yes, it is Machi Koro with demons. It's essentially like a simpler, faster, or weirder version of Machi Koro. And again, I mean, it's you're, we're going to keep talking about this, but you can see the art is super weird. This one, you know, the first game, I think you could argue it's like, oh, it's it's a little bit weird, but it's not that disturbing. This one, you're summoning demons and, and killing children, I presume. So it uh, definitely takes things in a darker turn. Finally, we have Don't Talk to Strangers. In this game, your goal is to get all your kids to the higher scoring places trying to avoid the strangers, in this case, which are aliens, before the game ends, which is when all the strangers enter the board. Now, on your turn, you have two options. A, if you do not have a kid on the board, you can place one at the start, which is the school. They always start at the school. Or you can play a card from your hand. There are many different kinds of cards. Most of them involve moving, such as this one, lets you move three spaces. You have to move the full amount of spaces without backtracking unless you're entering a scoring area. The areas are with the yellow border, so this person go one, two, three, but they could go one, two, I guess that's also three as well, but they could go one, two into there. Now, you can go through spaces that are grayed out, but after you play a card, you will draw. If you reveal a stranger sighting, you have to take one of the tokens and place them anywhere on the board. So if I were to place it there from now on, you can't go through there. If there was a kid there and a stranger was placed there, you, the kid has been abducted and taken away. There's also the possibility of a UFO. The UFO lets you pick any child, including one already in a scoring spot, and you flip the UFO. If it's green, the kid is safe. If it's red, it's been abducted and is removed from the board. You will keep going until, like I said, every space has been filled. Once that is done, you're going to calculate the amount of points you have and see who has the most points and is the winner. There are a lot of different kinds of scoring spaces, so some just for different amounts, but there are some weirder ones, like down here, they're worth more if there are more kids at this pep rally. Uh, Some of them even give you abilities, like if you have a kid at the park, then you can have more than one kid on the board. Normally, you are just restricted to one at a time until they get to scoring somewhere. There's also a whole other side to this board. I mean, I'll just flip it over and let you see, (laughs) which has a different layout, and it's a little, I think, a little bit more challenging, we've found. There's a little more area 
areas to block. Oh, yeah, and then there's these buses. You can also, like, mm -hmm. teleport if you have a bus card from space to space. There are also plenty of other cards as well to mess around with your opponents or maybe do some extra things. For example, if you have kids in the pool, you can force other kids in the pool. There's one that makes the kids have to go to prom, which is a good way to get rid of opponent's kid if they're close to a high-scoring area. And there are plenty other variants as well. Then there's a single player. So this one is the most customization compared to the previous two games. And honestly, for me, I actually really like the B board better. I felt like that one actually felt a bit more gamey, I guess. The other one was simple and it's good to learn the rules. But this one, I felt like there's a, bu a bit more pressure and more decisions you could make because Clubhouse actually gets points for each kid there. So if you have three kids there, each worth three. If you have four, they're each worth four. So there's a fun a bit more of a gamble there. I think the prom is a bit more interesting than the previous side and the way that the houses are spread out with the stranger spaces, there's a bit, there's a reason to gamble. The other side, I felt like it was pretty easy to avoid the strangers. Yeah, I think that's true. This is definitely a game, again, a, a one where there's going to be some more, some randomness involved. In this one, it comes in from what you draw from your hand because, you know, you might sometimes just not have a card that works for you. Yeah, <laughs> I did end up with two rounds where I only had bus cards. <laughs> yeah, so so that if you're not on a bus, that's not that helpful. So there is a variant where you can discard a card each turn, which I think adds a little bit more strategy to it. This one is the probably the most complex of the three, I would say, which isn't saying much. It's not that complex. But I mean, just from the fact that you have a board, yes. there's another layer to it. I think it's definitely complex, but I also I think part of it is also compared to Definitely, first of all, the treasure one's definitely the simplest. I think we can agree there. Yeah, that's... The demon one, you can make choices. You can make an engine, which I said. But I think the difference is so much more of it is luck based on those dice rolls. With yeah. this, I feel your decisions are much more impactful. You have more agency. Yeah, that's definitely like, true. Even though you draw from this, there is a bit more of like, oh, I'm going to go into this building because I have the car that lets me teleport to a mansion. Right. Or like... The, you know, I'm going to get people in the pool because I have the pool card, so it's more rewarding for me to have people there. Surprisingly, I think this might be the least creepy also <laughs> in terms of the theme. You know, alien abduction, there's nothing like that sinister about it. It's just a little scary. But I also think the one thing that we thought was kind of strange about this game is that on your turn, you either add a kid to the board or you play a card. And if you had a kid in the scoring section, that means your whole turn is just putting a kid out, which it can be kind of boring. And then if you're playing with three or four people, you're just waiting around to actually do anything. Or sometimes you're, everybody's doing that. It felt like a weird decision to me. I kind of wish you could just do both in the same turn. Yeah. We honestly felt like it should be a free action if you had no movable kid on the board. Yeah. Uh, obviously you'll have kids on the board in the scoring areas. So uh, looking at the three games all together, first off, they're on the lighter end. You know, this is not your your heavy two-hour game session <laughs> style. Uh, also, obviously, they're all tied together by the artist, the, the theme. You know, taking like 70s styles, lighter kids art, but has that darker, more tongue-in-cheek, I think it's supposed to be taken, even though... Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely comedic. It's, it's definitely <laughs> designed to be comedic. I will say, and I'm sure you will laugh at me at this and everyone else will... The demon summon one just was close enough to me that made me feel a little uncomfortable because like <laughs> having like Steve Irwin as a card. <laughs> it has some cards. All the characters, little kids are like modeled after either a horror movie or something. But yeah, there's a Steve Irwin and a Donald Trump for some reason. <laughs> there's some weird ones in there. But uh, like I said, well, you're I, a good Christian boy. You don't <laughs> believe in the devil. I don't. Worshiping well, wait, him. If you're Christian, you, don't you believe you, in the you devil? Don't, you believe he exists, but you don't believe in him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't support him. I have, but the weird thing is, it's very because I feel like it's so weird considering all the Cthulhu games I play. You know, where I, I mean, no, I agree with you. There is that's the I'm not a I'm not a demon fella, but uh, it's a that one is definitely the creepiest. <laughs> but uh, mechanically, I do really because I am a fan of Machu Caro, even with the randomness. Outside of like, I had one game where the person just kept buying the things I would have bought and it's bad rolls, which, you know, it can happen. But overall, I still enjoy the system. And like I said, being able to buy first beforehand, I like that a lot. It, like, it's such a small thing, but you know, when you get to buy a card and you roll that, you feel so good. Yeah. Another thing that I think this could be for some people to miss, to me, it doesn't bug me at all, especially in a lighter game and all, I don't know if the digging one had one that I can recall, but that they, there is a do this and you win. 
Like the demon one, we're going back to that one. You got that. With there's this. there's one demon where if you just roll snake eyes on your turn, you win the game. And I did that. But well, it was even better because when you play the demon, then the next person rolled snake eyes. Then I rolled snake eyes. So you're like, they're, they're coming. The snake eyes are coming. And then you finally got it. And, and you know, for me, it was hilarious. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. mind it. Like, I feel like in I think that was perfect. more fun than when somebody won the, the normal way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, all these games will last you 15 to 30 minutes, and they're all, I think, two to five players, except for this one, which is like one to four, the Don't mm -hmm. Talk to Strangers one. That's the range you're looking at for all of them. But yeah, they're definitely, all three of them are games that if if you are really concerned about balance and the competitive nature, <laughs> you might get frustrated. <laughs> Don't you, you shouldn't go into this they're, for that. They're swingy, but I like them. Though, I honestly, I will say playing... We did this one on this side map, two player ones, and I actually didn't feel too swingy. Hmm. Like I actually felt like this was, and I think hence the, like we said, it's the least random. There's more your agency to it that I, I felt like it was, it was still light, but I was making like, I was thinking like, okay, I can go here and how do I prep with this? If I draw a stranger card, I can put this here because I have the one that lets you bypass strangers. Hmm. So like, like you said, the, the, especially especially uh, the digging one. <laughs> there are some really wild cards that can come up. But this one was not too bad on that. I was actually, for a light game, like this felt like just, a, at least at the two player. I think if you start going higher, there's going to be a lot of weird cards in like someone can just draw four strangers in a row, you know? Yeah, well, I'll say this because maybe we differ on this point. Looking at the games as a whole, I'm pretty sure this one's my least favorite actually. <laughs> uh, I think for me, what you're saying... I actually think this one is almost like the uncanny valley of it tr It tries a little too much to be more strategic, and I don't think it really succeeds at it. I think the first two know what they are. They are filler games. They're luck-based, and they're f cool with it, and I thought they worked better. I think Let Summon Demons is probably my favorite, but Dig for Treasure is pretty good, too, for what it is. I on I feel like Let Some Demons, if I had to choose, would be my least favorite. Interesting. I will say I will that say one's... I think part of it might be the theme, but like also well, well, part of it is you can just play Machi Koro. I mean, that, truthfully, yeah. it's it's but pretty much like the same. even I'm trying to ignore that in the theme. Yeah, I felt like that was the one where it was more likely. I feel I could have the luck really just and have like I I had a, a full game when I just nothing happened. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, the true. treasure one is so simple, <laughs> and I'm just like flipping cards, flipping cards. Like it's hard to have a long turn there. Like I feel like even if you're playing the max player count, you're not going to be just sitting there. Well, my turn's done. Like that could happen to dig one, but usually it's your turn again. <laughs> so, so what's fast. so what's your ranking? Um, if I had to rank them, or if you had to, yeah, go ahead. I think honestly. I just, the dig one is so simple. I like it because it's simple for me. It's like, it does, it's what all three are trying to do. The dig one does best. Yeah. And being this quick, fun, like it is a dark game. You're technically digging up graves, but also to me, I almost got like Goonie vibe. Like it's just, they're around <laughs> skeleton stuff, but you're just on it. Remember like, when the Goonies dug up those corpses? I know, I know. Like, the, but like in the fact there's like the pirate skeletons. Yeah. Stuff, yeah, like yeah. The, that's yeah. what I mean. Like in terms of like, you don't, you would not consider Goonies a horror. Mm, depends on how you oh, look at it. Okay. For the parents, it was. They were worried sick. <laughs> yeah. I and would, then I, this one and then the demon. But like, I feel like. So we have the almost the exact opposite. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I, I, it's not like I would not die on the hill of that order, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I think the most agreeable one certainly is Let's Dig for Treasure because there's, I almost would argue there's the least to even criticize because it's so simple. Actually, and you know why? We haven't even mentioned yet a huge issue. Oh, yeah. Both Don't Talk to Strangers and Let Summon Demon, we had a huge critical flaw. We're like, we can't find this in the rule book. What do we do? <laughs> and we had to go on Borgie Online, and both times, Cryptozoic, someone from Cryptozoic said, Yes, this should have been in the rule book. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. huge things. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Like, um, I mean, it, one, it pretty much is involved to how what happens in this game when certain cards come out. And the other one was, we. It was – like with the ruling, it fixes. But we read it and like – as far as we can tell, we can make it someone can't win the game. Yeah, basically you could steal someone's demon and let summon demons. And if you, you don't usually draw anymore, and the rule book doesn't tell you, you they do draw one to replace it. So there were some oversights like that. And I, I, I think that's just, you know – 
the a lot of people will probably just play these that I think the target audience will just go, I don't know, just draw another <laughs> yeah, one. That's, like that's they're, they're not thinking. people like us. <laughs> like if you're a hardcore board gamer, you know, these aren't necessarily designed for you, but I would recommend these to people. At least I would recommend Treasure and for me Demons. This one I sound that we're a little more uh, torn on t- between the two of us, but uh, they're they're decent filler games. They're fast and fun, and I think maybe even because of the art, if you, if someone you think is like into this art, or if you are into this art, I feel like these make really funny gifts. Oh no, I a hundred percent agree because I definitely the art is. I mean, there's a that's reason why, why they, you're playing it. That right, is well, why I mean, you're playing that's it. That's why this. I would say this series is based on the artist. You know, it's yeah. not a, and I, I mean, I, while we seem to have disagreement about the order, I don't think I'd be like. Really, you bring like I've we've played bad games before, and I don't think any of these are like <laughs> terrible. They're light filler games that I yeah. would just be like, okay, let's yeah. None of them I think are gonna blow your mind. They're mm-hmm. they're all really simple, and there's a lot of randomness. They're they're I mean, I'm just gonna say they're not great games, but I think they accomplish what they're trying to do. I think you will laugh while playing some of them. Yeah, yeah. So if it's your weird kind of sense of humor and and you like this art style and you're looking for something quick and light, it's not gonna take too long, then these games are something you might want to check out. Again, uh, they're the Stephen Rhodes series from Cryptozoic, and they're Let's Dig for Treasure, Let's Summon Demons, and Don't Talk to Strangers. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you if you've had the chance to play any of these, which of the three you like the best. Maybe you have different rankings or opinions on these things. You can talk to us in the comments section. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you, but until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been a Roll for Crit Review. Congratulations, you have reached the end of the video. But before you leave, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. If you want to help us out more, you can check us out on Patreon. And if you want to see us play about in playing board games or some video games, you can check out our Twitch or our other YouTube channel, Rolf Crit Live, for more longer form videos that tend to be streamed live. So come join us.